So we're on the quest to find the furthest north battle in history, according to Wikipedia, which isn't very uh, reputable. But <clears throat> I found this Battle of Tolgas last night while doing the other video. This is an amazing, amazing battle. Uh, it really is worthy of its own movie. So uh, it happened on Armistice Day, the day that World War I ended, and it is called the Battle of Armistice Day. Um, it took place between uh, the Allies and the Bolsheviks at the time. Uh, they were led by this really interesting guy called Melachevsky on the Soviet or, you know, Bolshevik side and Robert Boyd on the Allied side. So what happened is the Allies were kind of positioned near a swamp and a river and a town laid out like that swamp, river, town. And the Allies thought that the swamp was sufficiently muddy and not frozen over. So they weren't expecting to be attacked. Um, unfortunately for them, they were attacked. And uh, the whole thing just plays out. It's just absolutely amazing. On the morning of November 11th, Bolshevik infantry attacked the American position in Upper Tolgas. Lieutenant Danis realized that the attackers were too numerous and retreated across the stream to Tolgas itself. At about the same time, another Bolshevik force, around 600 men, attacked Lower Tolgas to the north. A little confusing there, but don't be confused. Uh, to the surprise of the Allies, who thought that the swampy pine forest to the west had not frozen enough to be passed through. This force quickly captured Allied Field Hospital and threatened the lightly guarded Canadian artillery to the south. The Bolsheviks, led by a giant of a man, a renowned Ukrainian ice fisher, Melachovsky, spent several minutes ransacking Lower Tolgas, including the hospital. Melachovsky ordered his soldiers to kill the wounded British and Americans in the hospital, but was stopped by two things. The British medical NCO, realizing that Melachovsky and his men were probably tired, offered them rations and rum, and Melachovsky's mistress, who had followed him to the battlefield, entered and said she would shoot the first soldier who tried to carry out the order. Melachovsky countermanded the order. He would be mortally wounded hours later and die in his mistress's arms. Melachovsky's men left Lower Tolgas a few minutes later and, later and charged south towards the Canadian artillery. But while the Bolsheviks were in Lower Tolgas, the Canadian gunners had swung their south-facing guns around and fired two salvos at point-blank range, killing many and driving the rest back. A company of Royal Scots came up from Tolgas to support the artillery. They traded rifle fire with the Bolsheviks and suffered severe casualties. Meanwhile, Captain Boyd's troops and Tolgas itself had been easily able to hold off the Bolsheviks approaching from the south as the bridge that was the only route across the stream was defended by machine gun fire from a strong log blockhouse. Shortly before nightfall on the 11th, Lieutenant Danis led a group of men to dislodge Bolshevik snipers from the edge of the forest. At around the same time, the Canadian gunners bombarded buildings in Lower Tolgas, where Bolsheviks had taken refuge, except for the hospital, and then swung the guns around to fire two salvos into the woods to the south. I'm guessing for those snipers? As night fell, the Allied forces were surrounded, with the telegraph line to Archangel cut by Bolsheviks, and the prospect of reinforcements slim. On the morning of November 12th, Bolshevik gunboats appeared on the Davina and began lobbing six-inch shells at Allied positions. They were joined by a battery of howitzers that had been landed in the woods near Upper Tolgas. A heavy bombardment targeted the American blockhouse by the bridge across the stream, and at noon, a shell landed on the blockhouse, destroying it and killing two men. So that was the blockhouse that was like, you know, holding them off from crossing the bridge. The Bolshevik soldiers charged the bridge, but were driven back by two Lewis guns. I've seen Lewis guns in action, man. Those things are nasty. Um, one which was set up in the village church. The Bolsheviks attacked the bridge repeatedly, but were driven back by machine gun fire each time. 
Meanwhile, in the north, the Royal Scots retook Lower Tolgas and found their wounded in the hospital still alive, under the care of Melanchowski's mistress. That's wild. Again, just like stuff that's worthy of Hollywood. November 13th saw repeated Bolshevik attacks on the bridge, all unsuccessful. The Bolshevik forces continued their bombardment, avenging one shell every 15 seconds. Ooh. Averaging, sorry. Averaging one shell every 15 seconds. A heavy bombardment, even by the standards of the Western Front of World War I. The Allied commanders decided that their only hope for victory was a counterattack. On the early morning of November 14th, the American forces, led by Lieutenant Jean Trudere, advanced stealthily to the woods near Upper Tolgas, where the Bolshevik troops were encamped. The Americans attacked, making as much noise as possible to make it seem like they had been reinforced. They drove the Bolsheviks back and captured a building full of small arms ammunition. When they set this on fire, the sound of the exploding rifle ammunition seemed to have convinced the Bolsheviks that they were outnumbered. When Shuday's troops reached Upper Tolgas, the Bolshevik snipers left surrendered. That same day, temperatures dropped and the Davina River began to freeze over, forcing the Bolshevik gunboats to retreat back up the river. The Bolshevik infantry began to retreat. The troops in the north, near Lower Tolgas, had difficulty finding their way back, and many were later captured or found dead. Um, this whole business with the mistress and the hospital and this log cabin defending the, uh, the bridge, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I think this should be made a movie. I mean, heck, maybe in another uh, YouTube video I'll make a pitch for it. Anyways, I got to find this dot, you guys. I'll see you later.